Hello, this is Asher Kanoon with Pulse Secure Technical Marketing, and today we're going to look at the host checker functionality. Uh, host checking is how we do our endpoint posture assessment or uh, compliance detection. So first we're going to look at what's available, and then we're going to talk about what's configured, and then I'll show you how the functionality looks when it's used on uh, Windows and Mac. So under authentication endpoint security, you see a place where there's host checker. And one of the nice things here is we actually can do auto upgrading of the host checker. And all you really need to do is put in your credentials. So if you have a support contract, uh, with the support contract, we will do uh, routine checks to make sure that there's new signatures. If there are new virus signatures, we'll automatically update them. This will make sure that everything is up to date when you go and try to see if things like uh, virus, uh, antivirus software is running. Now we'll take a look at a policy. The one I'm using in this demo is called Forbidden Process. So we'll click there and then we'll talk about uh, what's available. So under policies, we have policies for Windows, Mac, Linux, Solaris, and mobile devices. For Windows, this is probably the one that has the most things you can do. So you'll see there's a bunch of predefined checks from antivirus to OS, and then there's a bunch of custom checks. Some of the custom checks that people really like to use are the ports, so you can uh, look for ports that are open, processes that are running, files that might exist on the device. So if you're doing things like watermarking corporate appliances with a specific file or registry setting, you can use those two checks to differentiate between a corporate owned or a BYOD device. If we look at something like antivirus, and I'm just gonna temporarily add this check here, uh, there's a few cool things you can do. One option is if I check this one, I can check for any antivirus product, right? So if anything's running, then, then you can say this device is uh, compliant or non-compliant, or you can check a specific product. So let's say your organization uses Symantec, there's a certain version. You can say either only run Symantec or you can get super specific. So if I, if I do the any supported product, you can see that it'll give you a list. So if we go down to like Symantec, somewhere down here, you can, you can just say anything from Symantec. But if you want to get super specific, you can actually go down and, and check the actual version. So if we go all the way down, you see there's a bunch of predefined ones. If I go down, I can go down and select very specific versions and then make sure that you are running that software. In some instances, we can actually check if there's been a successful scan. Uh, we can check if there's the latest and greatest uh, virus definitions also. So you can get really granular in how you define these policies. Um, and then you can uh, create a, a nice combination of these. And you can go in and create a bunch of these and then define how you want to require uh, these things. And then you can do things like uh, allow or deny. So if we look at this one, what we're saying is we have a forbidden process that we don't want people to run. For demo purposes, we're keeping this simple. We're gonna do uh, WordPad on Windows and text edit on Mac. But we're saying if you are running this process, if we find this process, uh, we're gonna deny you connectivity, right? It's just a real simple way for us to show um, how this works. And for the end user, what you'll see is we can send custom instructions, so we can tell them that you're running WordPad, so you can't connect. Again, this is all uh, customizable, HTML is allowed. You can give them links to uh, maybe an internal website that they can go and read more about why uh, their device isn't compliant and how to get it into compliance. Uh, and there's other things you can do. You can possibly kill the process, delete files, um, just a few different things. And if we also look at Mac, so you can actually have uh, custom messages for each platform. So if it's a Mac, it'll tell me that, hey, text edit is the thing that's running. You need to go and take care of it, all right? And then uh, once you define a policy, 
then the rest of it is um, really defined at the realm or the role level. You can do it either way. In this case, I have it running at the um, rel or the role level. So when we go into roles, you go into restrictions. Under restrictions, we have host checker. And the one that I have selected is forbidden processes. So people need to pass that before they can actually get connectivity. Okay, so now that you see uh, what we've configured, let's take a look and see how this thing actually works. All right, now we're gonna take a look at this uh, host checking behavior. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually start text edit. That is my forbidden app. Um, and I want this thing to be um, blocked until I shut that down. So um, first thing you see is when I try to connect, it's telling me my endpoint's out of compliance. Uh, it's telling me, hey, this thing is out of compliance. You need to do something about it. If I go look at the remediation, it's gonna say discontinue the use of text edit. I'm gonna say sure. I'm gonna go shut down text edit. And then I click retry. And then all of a sudden my device is compliant. Everything's uh, great. If I go back and I look at the uh, active user session, it's gonna show me that uh, a canoe is connected. Um, I'm using the host check around and the whole thing's compliant. I passed the forbidden process. Now I'm gonna go to uh, a Windows machine and do something similar. So here I have WordPad. I'm gonna make a connection. Again, it tells me it failed. When I go look at why it failed, it's telling me, hey, WordPad is running. Uh, you need to kill WordPad to get access. So we'll do that. And I'll say retry. Now it's asking me for my credentials. So we know we got past the uh, host checker uh, test. So it's gonna let me in. I'm connected, everything's great. All right, so you've seen the behavior when we're using the Pulse client, but let's take a look at what happens when you're actually just using a browser. So I'm gonna launch text edit to get my device out of compliance, and I'm gonna go to my uh, host check realm. And what happens at the beginning is they're gonna load the components. These components are for the uh, host checker. And what you can see is it actually um, ran the host checker, and it's giving me the warning message that's telling me that, hey, your device is, is out of compliance. Uh, and the reason is because you're running text edit. So if I go ahead and close text edit, I say try again. Now it's gonna go ahead and uh, check the state of the device again. Uh, again, this is running uh, just an applet that's downloaded. It's not running the Pulse client. And now it's prompting me to enter my credentials since I did pass host checking. So uh, the host checking is available on uh, desktops. Uh, we also do mobile devices through our MDM integration uh, with our own workspace and other MDMs. Uh, and we do it through the browser. So any uh, way you want people to connect, you're covered. All right. Thanks, and for more information, please visit www.pulsecure.net.